Hi, I'm Black Dragon, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Black Dragon Biker TV. And this is another edition of Black Dragon Biker News Network, Biker News You Can Trust. And as always, we'd like to thank you guys for tuning in from wherever it is in the world that you happen to be. Uh, and we just appreciate you and enjoy having you. And if you haven't already, uh, please take this time to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And that'll let you know uh, whenever we are broadcasting something new. And also, like this video and share this video. That helps the channel out immensely. When you share the video, the uh, logarithm, algorithm, it uh, generates great things and sends our channel around to other people. So we'd appreciate it if you do that. And as you may know, a lot of my videos are being demonetized these days uh, because we're just covering biker stuff and bikers and biker gangs and all that stuff are just no longer passe, so they demonetize the stuff. So we are depending more and more on you guys and your uh, wonderful donations. So you can see that if you are, are, of, are of mind and want to help the channel out, your donations would be appreciated. So we have uh, PayPal, we have Cash App, and you can also uh, give us a monthly contribution over at our Patreon page. So at Patreon, uh, it's Black Dragon National President. On PayPal, it's jbunchii at AOL.com. And on Cash App, it's dollar sign biker prez, P R E Z with a Z. So we, uh, moving forward, of course, you guys saw the uh, video that I did last night uh, about uh, the Detroit Gentleman Motorcycle Club and the uh, person that they found in the motorcycle club whose name was Lifer. And I, I'm lucky because we have a Detroit, a Detroit gentleman in the house. This is Mr. Reaper. Reaper, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Thank you. And uh, as a uh, Detroit gentleman, uh, he is actually from Detroit, just rode down. So we are very excited to be able to talk to him about his club brother and a little bit about his club. And so that this is more than just a headline in the news, uh, we get to know who this person was and a little bit about him and a little bit about what he stood for and a little bit about the club. Because we're losing our old timers. We're losing our, our, our uh, originals. <laughs> we're losing our founders. And the brain drain is going, and and what what we're getting back in return, uh, I don't know if it's so great. Uh, and so it's important to talk to these guys and get to know who they are before they're gone. But we want to talk about, uh, first of all, let's talk about the Detroit Gentleman. Uh, how old is your club? Detroit Gentleman been around since 1965. Wow. We're coming up on our 55th anniversary next year. Is that the mother chapter? Detroit? The mother chapter. Detroit is the mother chapter. So you guys have other gentlemen I've met. You have some Atlanta gentlemen. Yes. And uh, that's where I'm here for this weekend to see them. And some Tennessee gentlemen, or Memphis or something Memphis. like that. Memphis. Memphis gentlemen. Memphis. And Los Angeles gentlemen. L.A. Yeah. yeah Eric Hustle told me to tell you hi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. What's up, baby? <laughs> so, uh, so you you guys are everywhere. We're growing since 1965, and still strong. Still strong. So, um, what brought you to the Detroit Gentleman? The Detroit Gentleman was like no other club in the city. Uh, they were they were the club that messed with everybody, didn't mess with nobody. But they held their own. Uh, I rode with the Detroit Gentleman one time. First, I was a president of another club, of a UAW club, and the the national, the nat the, the vice national at the time ran into me. And we went riding up north Michigan. The vice national of the Detroit, Detroit gentleman. gentleman. Uh -huh. and, and turned me on to the gentleman. Wow. I rode with him one time. And when we rode together, tight, side by side, oh, that, I, I was in love. That suicide riding. I was in love. Your last club didn't do that? Your former club didn't do no, that? No, they didn't believe in that. Yeah, but but traditional motorcycle clubs ride suicide. Handlebar two by to handlebar. two, handlebar to handlebar. Tire, tire to tire. Let's yes, go. sir. Yes, sir. Mile an hour. And you ride a Victory Vision. Yes. A nice Victory Vision. Thank you. 
Um, your vision is beautiful. I'm taking, I'm stealing some of your designs. There are some folks out here who know which motorcycle to ride, but we're not gonna, <laughs> we're not gonna go on that. So uh, you found a, a home. You found a family. Yes. You found riders. Riders. Because you rode from Detroit down here. Just about every year. Okay. So it didn't matter. It was it raining on the way out. It was cold. No, we actually outran the storm on the way out. But we're gonna run back into one going home. Sorry. So it's okay. It's okay. That's what riders do. So um, you you um, have been in the club how long? Four years. Four years, and uh, and and you're the national treasurer. Yes. Okay, that's not bad. Thank you. You moved up the ranks, did you? <laughs> Man, I wish I could have got up there. That then I'd been done with it sooner. <laughs> so um, tell us about your brother. So the way the headline read was: Man found in a motorcycle club. Uh, bike burning outside uh, might be a suicide. Yes. Uh, the only name that they had was Lifer. And was his name Lifer or Lifer Baby? Lifer. He called himself Lifer Baby. Every that's, If you go up in Detroit right now, they're screaming Lifer Baby all down the street. Lifer Baby. And uh, so tell us about your brother. Lifer came in a club in 67. Uh-huh. So he was a he was one of the older oldest members in the club, and Lifer knew nothing but riding. The club was his home. The club was his home. Uh, I could get off off work at, in the morning. I go in there to do my cleanup. Lifer sitting there, you know, watching TV. Eating. That was his place, and he believed in riding. If you rode and rode your bike and not from club to club, he respected you. He respected anyone that rode their iron. Wow. Now, there's a video running around where Lifer left the clubhouse one day. There had to be like four or five inches of snow on the ground. And he rolled out of the alley on the other clubhouse right down Grand River on his way home. Wow. <coughs> In the snow? In the snow. That's amazing. That's, that's Lifer. He, he believed in riding. So some things happened and he felt like he needed to move on. Lifer was... Um, I think he just had a birthday Thursday. Uh -huh. uh, I hadn't seen him since since Tuesday myself, uh, Tuesday or Thursday. But uh, Lifer was Lifer, and I really hadn't spent that much time with him recently. But prior to that, I mean, he's a good guy. He's always dancing, always partying, chasing the women. <laughs> if you know, like, yeah. and how old was he? Like seventy one or something? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, still chasing women. I hope, man. I hope. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Life was the kind of guy you really had to know to, to meet him and talk to him to really get to know him. He, he was a strong guy. He was a strong guy. And he was a he was a an original. Yes. And um and so what what was significant about his bike burning? I thought that was interesting. You know, I can't tell you what Lifer exactly thought, but I, I think I believe that it was his end of end. If he couldn't ride his bike, he wouldn't want no one else to ride his bike. So that's what I would perceive it to be. Well, um, in in uh, in my culture, um, in in my uh, the Native American side of my culture, a lot of times when uh, older people felt like they weren't productive or something like that anymore. They would, uh, and my great great grandfather did this too. Uh, he just he just starved himself to death. Mm. He just stopped eating, and within about two months he was gone. Wow! So I I remember the old chants he used to do, and um, I remember uh, he was a good guy. But you know, like I said in my other video, we want to reach out and make sure that our biker brothers and sisters uh, are well. And I got a lot of responses in that last video yeah. from a lot of people who are alone and lonely and not well. A lot of people, uh, some people have said that their children don't contact them on holidays. And I've had people respond and say, and I, I, I realize that there's a lot of lonely people out there, even in clubs, even when things are looking great, you know, uh, sometimes they look great from the outside. And we need to take time to reach inside our brothers and sisters and say, are you okay? Is everything good with you? And 
you know, a lot of folks sent us messages. We got so many folks that watch this channel that a lot of my folks will reach out to you if you're lonely or if you're if you're heartbroken or if you need someone to talk to or if you're at your end. Um, I noticed when people would put those responses on my channel, other people would come down on that story and say, how are you? How are you doing? If you need to call someone, call me. So that's what I love about my viewers and subscribers. And uh, I just wanted to take the time to recognize Lifer Thank you. Uh, and not have, because we have guys like him in the Black Sabbath. We've got Mad Mitch and, uh, you know, uh, people, the, the father of the Black Sabbath Nation, Pep, Paul Pep Perry. We have, we have people like that. We had uh, Ken Adams who was, uh, who had cancer and went on a, around the United States like a 60-day motorcycle run with stage wow. 5 cancer uh, and never slept indoors the whole time. He slept out hmm. uh, and on, and he wanted to do that to show our young riders that the older guys were uh, up to the challenge. He wanted to show them that they could still ride too. Right. That those guys were riding for the Black Sabbath, he didn't want them to think that the older guys wouldn't do it too. Right. So he rode around the entire country to every chapter we had, and uh, and died two months later. So or a few months a few months after that summer ride. So I just wanted to draw a face to him, and and yeah. and uh, this is a guy that rode his motorcycle in the snow. This oh, yeah. is a guy that was always at the club. This was a hardcore real Detroit gentleman. He's actually ridden back and forth out west a few times. Yeah. So. Wow. So just to know his story and to give our condolences to the family and the club to, for your brother. Thank you. And thank you. I know this was personal and, yeah. and, a, and a bit of an intrusion, but uh, I just wanted him to to survive in more than just a look. On the, I on thank the, you and the Gentleman Nation thanks you. We appreciate you. All right, so that's us. Let us know what you have to think about this video, and uh, maybe uh, you need some uh, uh, someone to talk to, something like that, or maybe uh, you have a story like this. Tell us about the old timers in your club, and uh, what you're gonna do to to love them and show them that you love them and care about them right now, today, while they are still here with us, because once they're gone, all they are is a memory. And uh, you can't talk to them, but uh, they'll still be in your heart because you'll know the kind of people they were. Anyway, that's my two cents. Thanks for tuning in and get skinny.